Welcome to Sabbath School Today. So glad that you joined us in this lesson study entitled num number nine, Contrary Passages Regarding the Future Hope. Dear Father in Heaven, please guide our thoughts as we explore some of these more difficult passages regarding the resurrection and, and what, what the state of the dead is. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, nearly the first lie that Satan ever told us was about who man and woman is. He said, you shall not surely die in Genesis 3-4. And Eve believed him, and nearly the whole world believed Satan, that man is naturally immortal, that he exists somewhere in consciousness after death. And that's why spiritualism flourishes in Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, and even large segments of Christianity. Many imagine they find support for it in the Bible. The witch of Endor uh, bringing up Samuel, Christ's parable of the rich man and Lazarus, and the supposed eternal conscious torment of the lost in hell. Does it make any real practical difference what one believes about this so long as you try to live a good life? Well, yes, most certainly it does. If the lost are tortured forever under God's rule, he becomes a cruel tyrant beyond imagination. You can't be truly reconciled to God if back in your mind you cherish the evaluation of his character that way. How could you be reconciled? to the Nazis who ran Auschwitz. How could you be recognized for, to God? False natural immortality destroys the truth of the cross of Christ, leaving an empty symbol without meaning. If Jesus' death was merely graduating to a higher, more pleasant life, then he did not truly die the equivalent of the second death nor did he pay the penalty for our sins. The wages of sin is death, not eternal life in a new sphere. He could not pour out his life unto death, nor empty himself, Isaiah 53, 12 and Philippians 2, 5 through 8 tell us. Instead, Jesus withheld his most precious thing, his own life. And that would mean he could not be the lamb who was slain and redeemed us by his blood. And unless he is the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world by an infinite sacrifice, we can't learn to hate sin and love righteousness. Aside from the lamb's revelation of agape on his cross, practical Christian living is reduced to veneer and lukewarmness. Dear Father in heaven, how interconnected what we believe and what we, what we relate to Jesus' death on the cross, how intimately related they are. Jesus did not go to sleep over that weekend after his death. He truly experienced eternal death, a forsaken curse of God, and that second death. And that was the wages that, of sin which we deserved. And we thank you that he took that penalty for us in order to convey resurrection of life to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.